Hello, I'm Anthony. Just finished writing this song called Undertow. Uh, it's an acoustic piece. There's a single acoustic guitar, single vocals, no overdubs, no extra instruments, um, no harmonies. And the reason for that was because I thought the vocal performance was so strong, I didn't want anything to get in the way. just wanted the underlying acoustic guitar with the vocals over, to over the top to, to stand on its own. Over the course of the next couple of videos, we're basically going to go through all of the processes that I went through to um, produce and mix the final version of this song. I'm going to play you the whole song. It's only two and a half minutes long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the insert effects off. You can see everything's bypassed. And up until about bar 37, I'm going to let it run dry. And I'll bring all of the inserts in. You'll be able to hear those effects. Just one point to note before we start. None of what you're going to hear has any volume increase on the song at all. The loudness is ex exactly the same whether or not the inserts and the effects are on or off. So it's all about the effects themselves. Okay, here we go. Undertow initially without and then with effects. Hopefully you enjoy the stuff I've done to the song. We're going to break it down component by, by component over the course of the next couple of episodes. Uh, if you did enjoy it and you want to help support my channel, check out, there's a couple of links below. There's a Patreon link in the description, or there's a join button to become a YouTube channel member. I really appreciate everybody who has so far. First episode today, we're going to deal with the insert effects on the guitar and the vocal. I'm going to talk about each of those decisions and how I got to the final sound. In the second episode, we're going to talk about the send effects. We've got a couple of reverb units and also the effects on the master bus and just a, a holistic discussion about the song as a whole. So I think the first thing that we need to do is throw almost everything away and get us back down to just the acoustic guitar track without any effects. Now, just a point to note, this is a pure volume issue. Even though I've muted the reverb effect, there is still a send. All it's doing is making the track louder because there's a second copy of this guitar track going off to this essentially empty strip. But we don't particularly need to worry about that. What we're actually going to do is focus on each one of these insert effects in turn. 
Now, as I'm soloing stuff and bringing um, effects in and out, it's a little bit difficult to keep the volumes absolutely perfect. I want you to be able to hear this as clearly as possible. So you might see me adjust to some master volumes, but I'm not going to mess with any of the internal volumes of the track itself. That's all perfectly balanced. That's one of the things that we need to discuss today. So let's get it running in the background. Okay, so that's completely dry. What I like to do is use two copies of Insight on either side of the effect that I'm going to bring in and then I can make sure that I've got balance between my input and output. Basically want to make sure that these two things always read the same value. So here we've got our first effect. You can see that the compressor is pumping up to about minus three, minus four. This uh, Puig Child 670, which is an emulation of the Fairchild 670, uh, which is a stereo compressor, classic stereo compressor uh, from the, the 60s. It just adds so much warmth. It's my go-to compressor at the moment for if I if I don't care about absolutely sharp precision because it's quite a quite a slow kind of tube emulation. In terms of warmth and overall improvement of quality of the sound, it's one of my single favorite plugins. What I'll basically do when I'm um, auditioning effects like this, once I've plugged in the sound that I want, I want you know three to six dB of compression, not too much so that it's absolutely in your face. I don't want anything dramatic. There are no dramatic effects anywhere on this song. Everything is a subtle incremental effect. So I want it just put calming some of those transients of the acoustic guitar. As I'm plucking the notes, I just want it to control it a little bit, but I don't want to lose any of the flavor. So when I'm auditioning individual effects like this, uh, I'll have these two copies of Insight. Make sure that my levels are absolutely balanced with the effect both on and off, so I'm not getting any pollu pollution of my ears with loudness. I want to hear the effect itself. Then I'll hover over the bypass button, uh, switch to my trackball, which is basically just a stable mouse button that I don't have to worry about accidentally knocking the mouse, so I can press that any number of times. I have no idea whether that's on or off now. I can press play and listen to it. clearly on. And there it just thinned out. So just by closing my eyes and listening to the thing, if I can't tell that obviously, just by it's completely patently obvious to me when it's on and off, and then I can basically say that is superior. What I should really be saying is that's the better one. That's what I want to hear open my eyes. If the effect's on and I like it, then it's in. Every now and again, I'll plug something in and spend 10 minutes twiddling with all of the controls on the plugin, do the blind test and discover that I actually prefer it if it's off. Well, you know, that, that happens. Throw it away, start again. Don't accidentally just include something just because, you know, you think intellectually it's supposed to be good. So we've calmed those transients now. We've got all of that warmth and lovely, loveliness really surprising how much louder and fuller it sounds with no effect on insight. You can see that throughout that process. Well, if I'm turning on and off, basically the, the, the meters aren't that useful because they're basically capturing the loudness in both states. But when I'm doing the testing, I'll basically run it with the plugin on and make sure that these two things are balanced. So that's my nice warm foundation, my lovely tube emulation uh, compressor. The next thing that I'm doing, oh, I, I should say, and I'm not going to prove every single one of these steps, but Insight is balanced across any combination of these effects, even though I've moved it down just so that it's only spanning um, what the EQ that I'm now going to bring in. It is completely flat across the entire thing. Okay, so now that we've got that compression foundation laid, all I wanted to do with the EQ, this is a Neve 1073 emulation, is add a little bit of uh, bass to the guitar. 
At one point I tried playing a bass line in over the top and in the end I decided no it was better just that absolute purity, one guitar, one vocal, nothing else. So I just wanted to enhance some of the bass to give it a little bit more girth down there. So you can see I've got a bit of a boost at 110 hertz and I don't think I'm I'm boosting a little bit of the of the the, the higher frequencies of the guitar. 1.6 isn't a particularly high frequency range but what I'll do is I'll just really boost them so that you can hear what each of these uh, settings is doing. So this is the effect on. And back on again. You can really hear those bass frequencies being accentuated. Now let's hear the, the 1.6 boost and the high shelf boost. So that's the frequency range. So there's flat. Just enhancing some of that body. the shelf, all the tingly stuff, here's flat, that's how much tingle we want. Now the only change to volume that I've made with, uh, with these EQ settings are boosts, there are no cuts, and so I need to pull some, uh, some volume down if I'm going to retain unity. So you can see that I've just trimmed a little bit off my input level in order to make sure that when the effect is on, my loudness is more or less 0.3 of a dB is an absolutely tiny amount. In fact, at that particular moment in the song, it's very slightly quieter. So it is essentially at unity. But again, you can hear that bass boost. It sounds wonderful. And then I'm just pulling the overall volume of the entire effect down to compensate for the fact that specific frequency ranges in the plugin have been boosted. You have to bear in mind with these emulations that I'm selecting, they're all famed for adding warmth to sound. I want this song to sound as warm, and it's basically just a big cuddle. You know, I want the song to kind of cuddle you. And so the likes of the Neve 1073 and the Fairchild 670 are famous for achieving those effects. So I've deliberately gone to plugins that are famous for doing the kinds of things that I want, but then you've just got to use your ears to find what, what effect you actually want. Now the next effect in the list, this Citral 295, which is an Archuria plugin, um, is definitely one that I'm learning, I'm coming to, to grips with. So this is a situation where I've brought something in to say, well, show me what you can do. Can you actually make this song sound better? Now, I'm not familiar with this piece of kit personally, but my spreadsheet where I basically make a note of all of the emulations that I've got, I wrote down that it's a, an emulation of the Siemens W295B EQ, and then I've made some notes, EQ mod module, and the Citral console, gentle and musical, great high-end for silky vocals and instruments. But what well, exactly, right, okay, that's the note that I made from just internet research. Now let's find out what it sounds like. If it can't pass my blind test, if I can't prefer the sound with my eyes closed, it's not going to make the cut. The reason it's in the song is because it did pass that test. Let's have a listen to what, uh, what effect it's having. Start with it off and then I'll bring it in. You can really hear that tingle. So it's adding a little bit extra tingle. A tiny little bit of cut in that kind of pre-mud region. Now I could get analyzers on the job to find out exactly where this area is that's just kind of being pseudo attenuated, I suppose. But really it's about this little boost and because the whole thing is in German <laughs> and it's really not the most intuitive interface, this was definitely one of those where I just kind of played with the knobs and saw if I could find a sound that wasn't adding any volume, but it was adding a sound that I liked. 
and that's what it's all about. I actually started in this particular case with a, with a preset. You can see it's presence EQ and then did my adjustments from there. It was a little bit overly bright initially. It's like, whoa, wow, this is a dramatic piece of kit, again, with no volume change. And then dialing a little bit of that drama out to get to a more subtle effect got me to the stage where I was happy with the effect in the chain. So let's have a review of those plugins together, those three plugins together on and off. So I can basically bypass all three of them simultaneously. You can see what I'm doing. Let's hear what that sounds like. It's amazing that it's not louder because it sounds louder. So I'm really happy with that bedrock of sound now. I've just enhanced the quality of what's already there. I've not taken anything away. I've not brought any um, unpleasant frequencies in. So it's all been really subtle enhancement. The combination of those three effects together has done everything that I want. My ears can't find any more problems with it. So I'm going to move away from the general sound shaping now. I've got a compressor and I've got a couple of EQs and together they're doing the job. But then we need to bring in this final effect, the chorus. So this is the Dimension D. What a tool this is. Uh, I've got a pedal version of, a, of a, an old Boss Dimension C, um, which is kind of a, a baby version of this, and I absolutely love that too. The Dimension sound is a strange kind of hybrid chorus effect, but it's utterly gorgeous. So let's hear what this is doing to the sound. I don't care about Insight anymore. I don't care if this thing is adding volume to the sound. Now I'm into modulation. It's an entirely different territory. So we don't have to care about the, uh, the loudness meters. We just want to hear what this does. It's just spectacular. But rather than resting on our laurels and just saying, well, it's absolutely amazing, let's just move on. I did do a little bit of tweaking with the presets here. It does seem initially that there's not that much to do with the Dimension D. You press which option of chorus you want and then it basically just does the thing. What I did have to decide though is whether I wanted width. You can see I've gone for maximum stereo width here. And then also dialing in the amount of wet. So let's play with a couple of these controls and see what the different effects sound like. way too much. We've also got the different kinds of chorus modes. One and three are so close. This is more intense, but in the end I didn't want it shimmering quite that much. whatever reason, option two just isn't doing it for me. So that's just so simple, it's almost embarrassing. Add your chorus dimension D onto your guitar track and improve it, end of chat. So all of those together, you see, loudness still absolutely flat. Now we've got to do the same with the vocals and you've got a re really difficult decision to make. Do you try to process the vocals completely on their own or do you leave the guitar in place? Well, I decided to leave the guitar in place because the vocals have to integrate with that sound that I've already selected. 
So what I decided to do was just pull the guitar down a little bit while I'm listening to the vocals so that it's not quite so um, balanced or in your face, but it, it's still very much colouring the sound. And now let's start hearing them dry initially. Down at the undertow Born along on the ebb and flow same EQ. Lost in the moment, spellbound in wonder. Now this EQ is actually doing a very subtle but really important job. It's a tiny little bit of attenuation around 3.2. Pauline has a very sibilant voice and it's really difficult to control the S's. So I've actually just pulled them down a little bit using this plugin before sending it into a de-esser. Ordinarily I'd put the de-esser at the beginning of the chain in this particular case, I'm sending it through this. It warms it up, tames a little bit of that sibilance, and then it goes into the de for a little bit more sibilance control. So let's hear this on its own. Uh, out of the moonlight's gentle refrain Softly the footfalls fade beneath the paling light And in the evening those that remain linger with longing singing songs of rolling tides it's very subtle now the DSA. after all is said and done we slip and slide on lullabies I couldn't have timed that any better could I so that particular um, section this vocal section here is the one that I use yeah you can still see it uh, when I was actually uh, taming the sibilance because there are quite a few S sounds in it. So I'll just uh, cycle around that. And you can see that the DS is on a pretty small range. Now this is a really difficult subjective decision for me to make because I like the sibilance in Pauline's voice and I don't want to control it too much. So I'm trying to be as subtle as I possibly can be using the audition button to make sure that I'm only taking away the most sharp, the most violent of the S's. Lazing. It's all at the beginning here. After glow of time. Love that again. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies. Lazing in the afterglow. So it's only really two or three dB of attenuation on a narrow range that's basically just taming the most extreme of those uh, of those sibilant sounds. Now the combination of those two, the 1073, the EQ73 plus the DSA, absolutely does the job. So I'll mute both of these simultaneously, bring them in, and we'll hear the effect in and out. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies. Lazy. And then onto our beloved 670 again. Ordinarily, you'd put a compressor at the beginning of a chain, except, well, in my opinion, if you're dealing with DSing, because you want to get rid of all of that sibilance before the signal goes into the compressor. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies. That's a lot of compression. Blazing in the afterglow of time. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies. Blazing in the afterglow of time. So all of that stuff in and out. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies. Blazing in the afterglow of time. So now I can bring the uh, guitar level back up so that they're properly balanced. Link these two tracks together and now I can AB all of the inserts on and off and we'll hear everything that we've done today. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies, blazing in the afterglow of time. After all is said and done, we slip and slide on lullabies, blazing in the afterglow of time. So 
that's a really good foundation. I'm really pleased with that bedrock we've got now. In the next episode, we'll introduce reverb, which is completely going to transform the sound, obviously. And then we'll talk about some master, master bus processing. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.